everyone. Tis the holiday season, which means time to paint something ethereal, like an angel that we've heard on high. So, this is a very cramped area. Let me get comfortable next to my tree. Isn't it beautiful? So I did um, a crappy sketch, and I, I say that because it was kind of rushed. And I thought, oh, you know, the last painting that I did where I sketched directly onto a black canvas went so well that pff, why not do it again? Piece of cake, right? Not so much. So this is the sketch. You'll be able to see it when I put it over there. And it's um, unfinished. But you know the holiday season, you have time constraints because there's shopping to be done. There's family that's going to be traveling. Yeah, I decided to do something small. So that's what I'm going to do, and um, this might not work out well at all, <laughs> but uh, I am known for, when it comes to pressure, pulling rabbits out of my hat, because I'm magical. So let's get started with the shit sketch. All right, so I'm going to start on the face and see if I can make sense of anything on here. I had screwed up the nose, so... That's going to have to be fixed and kind of see if I can make it look like a face. All right, so I'd like to start out by saying that I have not painted anything with this degree of detail on a canvas smaller than a 16 by 20 in quite some time. Believe it or not, I find larger canvases much easier to work with for sketching and painting, so I had to break out the Zen Art miniature brushes for a good portion of this painting. Also, I'm using golden open acrylics to create a grisaille or grayscale underpainting, and I use three colors in order to do this. Burnt umber and carbon black mixed in equal parts to cancel out the bluish undertones of the black, and then I add titanium white to achieve the desired values from dark to light. And if you'd like to see a video on a grayscale painting that I did using this method, please hit the button above. I'm also doing this grayscale underpainting to establish the values because my intention is to finish this painting in color with oils. I want this angel to have a youthful appearance but not childlike, so I'm trying to establish soft contours in the features without making them look chubby, like baby fat, which I still will use as an excuse when I gain a few pounds over the holidays. And it, it doesn't work as well as it did 20 years ago. For some reason, now that I'm in my 40s, people tend not to believe me, but there are skeptics everywhere. But enough about that. But let's talk about painting on a black canvas and why it's beneficial to do an underpainting like this. Well, okay, one thing you might notice if you paint directly onto a black canvas with color is some of your colors disappear. This is a common problem you might face because some colors are more transparent than others and they don't show up on top of black. So if you do a grayscale underpainting, this solves that problem. Well, this isn't perfect by any leap of the imagination, but at least it has kind of the shape of a face and the nose isn't quite right on this side. Lip, not really crazy about that, but I'm going to kind of move on from the face because I don't want to spend too much time on the underpainting when I'm going to come back and paint over it anyway. So I'm going to start on the hair surrounding the face, the neck, and see how it comes together from there. One thing I will say about detail, it's not necessary to have throughout a painting. For instance, I tend to put more detail into facial features than hair. It is not necessary, in my opinion, to paint every strand of hair in great detail. It's far more important to have detail in the areas that you want the viewer to take notice of. In this case, all of the fine detail will be concentrated on the face of the angel, the wing, so it's recognized as an angel, and the doves in the foreground because they are a symbol of peace. 
I find it helpful to choose what I want to draw attention to and what can be more impressionistic or abstract in order to tell the viewer what I spent more time on or the message I wanted to convey, so they in turn see the focal point more clearly. It also allows me to paint the secondary areas, i.e. the hair, flowers, neck, and chest faster by using either blocks of color, as you see in the neck and chest area, or brush strokes, like you see in the flowers, in order to give the implication of an object or a structure. So this is something that I have learned over time, and one of the reasons why I kind of had to train myself to do this is because I am naturally a detail-oriented person, and I would spend all of my time getting caught up in the most minute details, and it would drive me absolutely up a wall until I had to kind of train myself to be like, why are you getting all caught up in details that aren't necessary, and nobody is going to care about that strand of hair, or, you know, that that little tiny stamen that you want to paint in that flower and these are all techniques that took me a little bit of time to kind of wrap my brain around because I would just use this over analytical side of my brain constantly and it made my paintings take way longer to paint and instead of just kind of blurring my vision out and being like, okay, what's my focal point? It's almost like using, um, what's that smart blur or whatever in your photo editing app. And you're kind of like, you blur everything out except for the focal point. And so your focus is just on that one particular area. Of course, I could spend hours talking about the methods I've tried to fix my over analytical brain, <laughs> but we're not going to treat this as a psychotherapy session. Not today, anyway. We're gonna just talk about art. <laughs> Ooh, some of us are a little bit neurotic when it comes to details. And with that, this underpainting is almost completed, and then it just needs to dry. Okay, so this has had time to dry for a couple of days and I am going to go into some oil paint and I've already got my palette set up and um, we'll try and it's pretty rough at the moment so you can see it's just kind of this um, monochrome underpainting and I haven't put any of the abstract elements into it yet so let's see if we can bring this into it actually looks pretty good considering the sketch was abysmal um but i think we can make it into a pretty pretty nice painting of an angel Okay, so one of the greatest things about oil paint is how easily you can mix colors. Not just on your palette, but also on the canvas. Yes, you can place one brush stroke of one color next to a brush stroke of another color. And with a clean brush, mix the edges of these two colors together. This is also known as blending, I know. But you can also overlap different colors and they will also mix for a slightly different effect. You can create some of the softest, most subtle gradients and some of the most dynamic multifaceted skin tones. The richness of oil paint cannot be beat. And that's just my opinion. What are the drawbacks of using oil paint? Well, the curing time. Okay, so yeah, oil paint can take months to cure, which can sometimes discourage artists from using it because you then have to wait to varnish it. However, there is a product called Gamvar Varnish by Gamblin, and this varnish is not like other varnishes because it's breathable. It allows you to varnish your oil painting once it's dry to the touch, and because it's breathable, your oil painting will continue to cure. And this takes a lot of the stress out of things, especially if you're a mixed media artist and you want to sell your work quickly. So Gamvar Gloss Varnish also intensifies the colors and makes them look brighter and the shadows deeper. So yeah, let's just say that it's 16 days before Christmas and this artist, well, we'll just call her Olivia for this fictional example. Well, Olivia decides last minute that she wants to give someone an oil painting of, I don't know, uh, like an angel or something for Christmas. But oh my god. That is not enough time for that painting to cure, let alone become touch dry, right? 
Actually, it is. If the underpainting is done in acrylic, well, that dries pretty fast, right? And if a fast drying medium such as Galka gel medium is used in conjunction with thin layers of oil paint, the oil paint will be touch dry within around four days, making this painting Gamvar varnish ready, which dries in about 24 hours, which also makes this painting Christmas gift ready in less than two weeks. That's pretty cool, right? Now, I'm not um, sponsored by Gamblin or anything like that, um, but I will put links in the description for Gamvar Gloss Varnish and Galka Gel Medium, which I absolutely stand by and I use them all the time with my oil paints. Um, the other thing that I do use is I use either odorless mineral spirits as my thinner or I have this other thinner which is Eco House orange thinner and it's made from orange peel so it's non-toxic you don't want to drink it or anything like that but it doesn't have any fumes or anything like that and it actually smells really nice Smell it smells like oranges these are products that i highly recommend for any kind of oil painting okay so I'm really happy with the face and the hair so far and I did use a lot of different colors because I do want it to look kind of like this multifaceted um, kind of ethereal being and at the same time maintain this youthful look to her face which is sometimes hard to do without making them look childlike. Um, but I think I managed to do it by kind of giving more the softer angles and the kind of softer mouth area, but also using all of those colors as well. Um, there is an area down here. Uh, the arm is kind of warped and I'm going to have to fix that with oil paint and I think I'm going to have it kind of come down a little. It's like a weird lumpy arm. Um, so I'm going to have to fix that and then with the wing I think I'm going to continue with some of those like almost the blues and the purples to kind of make it look more give the appearance of it being a white wing because you know like in the winter where you have snow and the shadows are bluish purple I think I'm going to do that with this wing and I'm probably going to do that similarly with these doves and maybe with her white um tunic thing. I only did one wing because I think that it's better with this composition to give the impression of an angel. I don't need to have both wings. Um, there are enough wings kind of throughout the whole entire painting. Um, then I think I'm also going to put in some abstract elements. Like I started to over here, I want to have some kind of symbolism, almost giving the impression of a halo, but not really putting in a halo. Okay. Okay, so with this bit of clothing here, I kind of was continuing on with this multifaceted, multicolored kind of, I don't know, theme throughout this painting. And I will show you what my palette ended up looking like because I tend to mix colors as I go when it comes to oil paint so that I get different shades. And that's why you see all these variations like in the face and in the neck and the chest and even in the hair um, is because I just continue to mix different colors. Um, I find that it creates more of a dynamic painting and it doesn't look kind of, I don't know, bland. So... Um, with this part here, I'm going with the direction of the arm and that's one of the other things that I tend to do is I go with whatever plane shifts I see. Um, like in the face with the cheekbones and it's kind of coming down at an angle and you see more of the blotchy colors in the chest because that's a flattish area. But with the arm, because the arm is going down, you see all of those brush strokes going kind of down um, in the direction that the arm is facing so so yeah but all these color mixes are definitely an important part of this painting because I did want it to give it that feel of kind of this iridescent look to some of the things and I did not want it to be boring color at all I also think it kind of adds to this ethereal vibe that I'm trying to create but 
I mean, maybe that comes across, maybe it doesn't, I'm not sure. So this is just a, a real quick look at my palette, and there is another layer of palette paper on top of the first one. Um, yeah, so I do mix as I go, and I create a lot of variations of different colors. And especially for this painting, for such a small painting in 11 by 14, there are a lot of different colors on there. So earlier in the painting process, I had used some black paint on top of the black gesso and kind of created this arch going over her head, like an archway, leaving the black gesso, which is really matte as it was, so it kind of outlined it for me so I could give this kind of gold effect, which I just used raw sienna, yellow ochre, um, some cadmium yellow and white to kind of give that metallic effect going over her head and also on her headband. With the wing, I used a lot of the same color combinations that I used in the top of her hair. And then once again with the bird, I wanted it to have like all of these different kind of colors for the shadows underneath and then have that bright white in the wings. And I thought that that really kind of looked nice. It came out really pretty. Okay, so here she is. She is all framed, she is all varnished, and she is still curing. Yes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I hope everyone has a healthy, happy, wonderful holiday. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I love you guys, and I will see you next time with something really vibrant and colorful. Yeah, we're going to get into some color. Okay, bye guys.